All right, Corden is rolling. It's uh, Friday, March 31st. So I'm going to walk you guys through a lab today. I'll, I'll just be up here in uh, front of the room and just guiding you guys along. Of course, we have a short day today. Uh, we're going to do an oscillatory motion. So I've got some springs. I just picked one of these. I've got it hooked up uh, to a ring stand. I've got a box of weights. And we're going to do, do a bunch of things with this. Uh, we're going to figure out what was the spring constant in the spring. That's something we can figure out. Uh, we're going to figure out um, what do these oscillatory motion graphs look like? X versus T, V versus T, A versus T. Okay. Uh, so come up um, uh, Monday, I'll do uh, uh, FRQ with you guys. Oh, there was no uh, part B, for, like most of these sections have a part B to the multiple choice on AP Classroom. Uh, there wasn't that for Unit 6. Unit 6 is, uh, has some of the fewest questions on the uh, AP exam. Okay. Uh, so that's not the, but there, there were some FRQs. I did uh, open them on AP Classroom. Um, they're not going to be due, but uh, if you want extra practice, then I mean, there's there's always lots of extra opportunities here, right? But, and then uh, I'll, I'll pick one one or two of those, and we'll go over those on Monday. Uh, I will uh, write you guys a quiz over the weekend, and uh, well, that ready to go. So get some um, lab practice today. All right. So before we uh, hit that lab, though, let me switch my screen over. And let's look at, because I just got a handful of posters related to oscillatory motion. So let's look at these. Right. Oh, if you see a pendulum, there's oscillating motion, right? There's a time period, there's a frequency involved. Okay. So I remember time period is two pi to squared L over G. Now you do have this formula on the uh, AP equation. So you have access to that. Uh, what you guys want to more be able to navigate or like what are certain relationships? Like for example, what if you triple the length of the pendulum? What happens to the time period? Oh. Um, it gets or, whoops. Yeah, it gets bigger. Oops. I, 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 picked a, I picked a silly factor, didn't I? It'd be square root of three times bigger, wouldn't it? It's like 1.7 bigger. Right. I meant to say nine times the length. Because if you have nine times the length, what, what happens to the time period? That would triple in that case, right? Because square root of nine is three. Right. Uh, what if you have uh, nine times the gravity field? What happens to the time period? Get, get to a third, right? Because one over nine square root gets yeah, a third of the time period, which means to be swinging back and forth faster, right? Oh, you know what I should have made a poster for this thing on the back? Is uh, time period versus frequency, right? What is the relationship? What is time period and frequency? Yeah, ju yeah, just reciprocal, right? right? Time period is one over frequency, frequency is one over time period, right? So if you had a time period of like five seconds, to five seconds to swing back and forth. So from this point back and forth, uh, if that was five seconds, that would be a frequency of one over five seconds, which would be 0. 0.2 hertz, right? 0. 0.2 hertz, 0. 0.2 cycles per second, right? Um, there's a right, non-bob pendulum is not going to show up on the AP exam. Uh, I, I do like to give you guys uh, some extra stuff to um, so you guys can see the bigger picture, because if you know like some extra stuff, then um, that helps uh, put into context the stuff that you are supposed to know on the exam, right? So for example, uh, this I could be moment of inertia, right? Uh, what if... Um, like, can you turn this back into just a regular pendulum where all the mass is just in the bob and the string is like a negligible mass, right? Well, what would happen? Oh, do you guys remember what rotational inertia is just for a point that's like revolving around? What What is that? MR squared. Yeah, yeah. You guys remember MR squared? MR squared? Right. So like if you just take uh, the mass, the, I mean, this is like a funny shape, the singer is, right? But what if you just put his mass at the center of mass? You said like all the mass was there. So this would be MR squared, right? And R would be L, it would just, just be the length of the pendulum. Right? So one of those would cancel. And you'd have, let's see, M times L, or, or, or um, yeah, over MG, the Ms would cancel. Oh, and that would bring you exactly back to this. Uh, so you guys see that? Right? That's one of the good things to be able to do from this class is see relationships like that. Right? Even though, again, you won't deal with that exactly on the AP exam. Right. Ah, here's one that we're gonna care about today, right? So look, at the same, uh, same structure. Uh, as as the pendulum, right? But now we got a uh, mass bobbing up and down, right? right? So we're going to deal with this a lot today, right? Uh, now, if you look at the motion, like the kinematic motion of this bobbing up and down, right? Uh, that's going to fit into uh, like sine and cosine curves, and this is the uh, bridge to that. Right? So uh, if you were to watch, say, like a, a car go around a circular racetrack in your uh, aerial point of view, so we're up in a helicopter watching a car go around a circular racetrack, right? uh, the um, Y coordinates and the X coordinates would exactly match uh, that of the, um, an oscillating spring, right? So that's like a that's like what sine and cosine is, right? How high are you on the circle is sine. How far right, left are you on the circle? That's cosine, right? On a unit circle, anyway, right? 
Uh, so you can get graphs that look like this, right? Oh, so I gave you guys a, a, a sine graph for the position versus time. Now, if that's true, then velocity versus time would be a cosine and acceleration versus time would be a negative sign. And then this is actually part of a four part pattern. So the next part would be negative cosine and then that would switch back around to positive sign again, right? Uh, probably a better way, actually what AP does and what most textbooks do is they actually start off with the cosine, which I, I think actually makes more sense. And I went back and changed this poster for next year, right? Because if, if you start with a cosine, what that means is that uh, you're pulling something from the equilibrium position, which then would allow it to like start going into motion, right? Versus the, the way I have it exactly on the slide is like, we actually started counting like when it's going through the equilibrium position. So it's like already in motion at this point. Right? But I mean, th this could technically work, right? right. So uh, something else I want you guys to see too, and we'll do this today too, is uh, when you go from X to V. Now, uh, will AP ask a question about this? Probably not. But again, this is one of those things that it's going to know the bigger context, stretch your imagination a little bit. Right? Uh, how exactly do you go from X to V? Well, the, the amplitude is here. So th that's part of it. Right, like if you pull this back, um, like five centimeters versus ten centimeters, that's gonna make a difference. Right, um, twice the amplitude is gonna be like twice the speed. You said, right? But something else too has to do with like how stiff the spring. Right, uh, has to do with this um, angular frequency. Now this omega is actually not angular velocity. Oh, it's not. It's, it's not angular velocity. It's called angular frequency. I, I know it's the same symbol for that. Right, but it's uh, two pi times the regular frequency, and frequency is one over time period. You guys know that. So we'll we'll do some of that today too. Okay. Uh, ooh, guys, this slide right here. You know you're going to be asked questions about this, right? Right. You're going to have to linearize either uh, the motion of pendulum swing back and forth or mass bobbing up and down on a spring, right? You're, you're going to have to. Do, this is going to be points on the AP exam, right? And you only need 35 points total to pass it. So this, this is going to be some of your points right here. Right? So be able to go from this yellow box to this uh, graph, and we'll get some practice for that today, because that's one of the things that got lined up for you guys. Okay, right. uh, we're, we're going to do the one on the right, but same idea, right? Okay, you guys see that? Okay. We've done it lots of times in the past. We'll do it today. Make sure you can do it. Um, well, five weeks from now. Uh, oh, okay. And then there's a bunch of stuff about waves, which used to be on the AP exam, but all the stuff was cut. So um, anyway, uh, but, but, uh, you, you guys have seen that like most of the semester. There's lots of posters that. Um, yeah, I've barely talked about that all my other classes are learning, including all this wave stuff. Okay. So, okay, so let's switch back over here and uh, do, uh, do this lab. Okay. And this lab, uh, there's not like a single um, thing I'm looking for. I, I just want to completely explore the motion of a uh, mass bobbing up and down on a spring. Okay. So if this were an experimental design question, one thing they would ask is uh, to, to do is like briefly describe the lab setup. So this here, I'll put this in front of the camera. Now, if you're watching this video at home, um, you get just uh, a lot of soft camera, right? But oh, I would say something like, uh, attach a spring to a ring stand, let it hang vertically and attach a mass to the bottom, right? Something like that, that could be your basic setup. Okay? Uh, and, and then after that, uh, you could describe things like, okay, well, pull it like like two centimeters and let it bob down, so it's just it's gotta bob up and down like this, right? All right, now I picked a really stiff spring right here. Uh, let me, let me see if I got one that's not as stiff. Because okay. the less stiff ones, they look a little better. Okay. And I've got one already hooked up there, you guys see, uh, off camera there. Right. Here we go. All right. So this one has less spring constant. All right. Let's watch this thing. Ooh. Ah, you guys see it bobbing up down? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Just, just count the number of cycles. Now I'm gonna break out my cell phone to use as a stopwatch, right? And then uh, do this thing here. Um, right, we're, we're gonna measure um, how far is this thing being pulled? I think, right? All right, so let's look at this uh, paper, okay? Topic for you guys, okay? So yeah, the natural inclination is to uh, set you guys up a bunch of tables and graphs. Um, it's good to be able to do stuff from scratch that takes more time. This is kind of a compromise, right? So I got tables set up for you guys, got some graphs set up for you guys, and then some more graphs on that, right? But just the axes. So at least you guys are gonna have to uh, uh, label these things and write the units and the whole thing, right? Do you guys write your name up here? Write your name. Okay. So write your name right here. Name. Right. Okay. So your name's right there. Uh, this table I put sideways because there's actually a bunch of things that we could either measure or calculate. Okay. Let's start with 
uh, trial, but trial number. And there's not a single thing I'm looking for for this lab. Uh, I want to do some linearization with you guys. Uh, look at the oscillatory motion. Uh, we'll look at time period. We'll look at a bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, one thing we're going to do, or so, and, and then um, but let's put the units down here. Right. So for trial, I'll just be like some, some number, a trial, like ABC, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, I'm going to use different masses. We'll treat mass as an independent variable. Uh, what do you think we're going to measure mass in? Yeah, kilograms. Yeah, kilogram. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of ways you could go with this setup. Right. What's something else, else that you could measure? Oh, time period. Yeah, maybe time period of oscillation. Uh, how about this? I'm going to make two columns for that. Because a good practice to do is to let it oscillate down, up and down, say, like 10 times, and then divide by 10. So let's go time for 10 oscillations. And then we'll do the time period for one oscillation. But that, that would be time period, right? Just one oscillation. Right? And what's a good unit for that? Seconds. Seconds. Right? So any number that goes into this column has a unit seconds. Right? Uh, what's something else we can measure? Oh, okay. So some some of the distances, right? Um, to uh, like like the spring, maybe. Um, I'm not sure in an equation I can exactly fit that into, but tell you what, how about uh, how about stretch length, right? So the, the spring is like the bottom of the spring is already somewhere without a mass on it. Then I put the mass on it's going to stretch some amount. Okay. So let's say uh, I'll, I'll say x equilibrium, right? And uh, what what unit do you think? Yeah, let's, let's go meters. Now, of course, it's going to be a tiny number of meters, but let's just stick to base SI units today. So if it's like two centimeters, I would call it 0 0.02 meters. Right? So how small numbers there. Uh, well, while I'm doing some with stretch uh, length, right? uh, let me also bring in, uh, let's say, amplitude of motion. So let's say, it's, let's say it's just like five centimeters. So that'd be 0 0.05 meters. Right? And then after, it, it, okay, so it's just hanging at rest there, equilibrium. Right? And I can pull it down in an additional like two centimeters. And I go, it's going to bow, 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 oscillate about that point. So I'm going to say amplitude, like however much I pull it down and let it go back and forth. Right? Uh, and that could be also in uh, meters, maybe, right? right. Uh, all right. OK, I can think of a bunch of other things we could calculate, but maybe I'll uh, leave that aside for now. Right? So these are the main things we're measuring. Okay. Um, it's going to trial one, two, three. Maybe I'll take like three different masses and then we'll go, go that way. Okay. All right. So we uh, go off screen here and look at some of these things. Uh, let's start with the, uh, ooh, here. I'll pick up my masses ahead of time. Okay. Let's, let's try these three masses right here. Okay. I got 100 grams, 200 grams, and 500 grams. So that'd be how many kilograms is this small guy? Zero point one. Yeah, 0 0.1. And then, okay, so this guy's twice as much. All right, and 500 grams, that's like 0. 0.5 kilograms. Okay. Oh, another thing good to do too is actually do multiple trials per each independent variable, right? Okay. So ideally, like if we had a bunch of hours today, I would do like three trials here and take an average, three trials, take an average, three trials, make an average. Okay. Now, I'm going to skip that step, but if you're doing experimental design on FRQ, you want to mention that, right? Uh, and you would say the reasoning is you want to reduce what? Experimental uncertainty, right? Um, you could say, uh, we'll address a uh, random error maybe of um, the work with stopwatch, right? Uh, I've, I've been told in the past by AP graders, don't use the term human error. I mean, I haven't seen you guys write that anyway, but it's just like nails on a chalkboard to them. So you could say experimental uncertainty. You could say uh, reduce random error. Uh, th those are okay. All right, so let's go with the small guy right here. I break out my cell phone and pull up the stopwatch function. All right, got that ready to go. Right. Uh, of course, there's a bunch of things we're going to measure, right? All right, so uh, I, I want to know how far is this going to stretch just by itself. So this is going to be like a Hooke's Law type application. So your stick right here. How far is this going to stretch? Uh, call it five centimeters. It's really close to rounding a little bit. So how many meters is that? 
0 0.05, 0 0.05, because 0.5 meters would be half a meter stick. It's definitely not that. So 0 0.05 centies, hundred cents of a dollar. All right. Uh, let's say I pull this down. I'm, I'm going to pull it down an extra two centimeters. So let's call it amplitude uh, 0 0.02. Uh, meters. All right, and then get my stopwatch ready. Uh, so that's two centimeters, bam, right there. All right, ready, and start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. That took 4.51 seconds. 4.51 seconds. All right, divide by 10. 0.45 seconds per cycle. Is that right? All right, all good. All right. Uh, again, ideally, I have to do multiple trials to take an average, but uh, let's get past that and bring in uh, the middle guy, two, 200 grams, 200 grams. So how far is this going to stretch? Now, if you're thinking ahead a little bit, Hooke's Law, Hooke's Law, if I just doubled the mass, therefore I doubled the weight, what do you think is going to be the new stretch length? Double. It should also double, right? If this is an ideal spring and yada yada. Okay. Let's, let's, let's see, though. Oh, it is 10 centimeters. All right. I, I didn't actually know exactly how well that was going to line up exactly. It is exactly 10 centimeters. So 0 0.10 meters there. Okay. I'll, I'll do the same thing. Let me also pull it 0 0.02 um, meters here. Uh, what do you guys think is going to happen to the time period now that I just increased the mass? Should it increase the time period, right? right? There's like a square root relationship. Right? Or you say um, maybe back then increasing the inertia. Okay? Right, so pull it down two centimeters. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right. And that is 6.36 seconds. 6.36, or I could say 0 0.64, I guess it would round to. What is 0.45 times square root of 2 times square root of 2? Hey, ha ha ha, it's an exact match. Look at that. Right? 0.45 times the square root of 2, because they doubled the mass to so square root relationship. It got exactly that. That is that. Whoa. Right. After Crazy Good Friday. Here, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Time period is 2 pi times square root of m over k, right? Ah, look at there, look at there. Okay. Okay. And now let's bring in the 500 gram guy. Right. No, okay, so I've got that there. Um, right. All right, so I think we're working with an ideal spring appears to be. Right. That's right there. See how far the stretches. It's like 26 centimeters, 26 centimeters. So that's 0 0.26 meters. Okay. Uh, I'll pull it down. Let's just do two centimeters again, just be consistent right there. All right, so that's an equilibrium. Ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so that is 16.25 seconds. 16.25. Um, so that's 1.625, something like that. All right. Seconds per cycle, that's the time period. Okay. All right, that right. Here we go. Um, all right, so let's do uh, good so far. Oh, uh, let's do a couple of graphs up here. Uh, I've got, a, got some graphs lined up for you guys. I want to 
do uh, two things here. Let's do Hooke's law here, and let's do an oscillation here. We'll, we'll linearize an oscillation graph here. Okay. So let's do Hooke's law. Right. Now, if this one's going to be Hooke's law, then what should each axis be? What should the uh, horizontal axis be? Horizontal axis. Yeah, x, and we're looking for the, the equilibrium x value, right? right? So but before I set it into motion, it just pull down something. And that's going to be in meters. So x equilibrium, it went up to 0.26 meters. So uh, 0. Point, oh, whoops, or no, 0, 0. 0.10, 0. 0.20, 0. 0.30. And then what should the y axis be? Force. Uh, yeah, force. Um, let, let, okay, yeah, no, here, let, let, let's, do it. let's do force, or you could say weight, uh, and that's going to be in uh, Newtons, right? Weight's going to be in Newtons, right? And then uh, what property of this graph will spring constant be? Slope. Should be the slope, right? Ideally, this should be a straight line, and the slope should be the, the spring constant, right? F equals kx. That's what Hooke's law is. F equals kx. Okay. Uh, ooh, weight in newtons. Uh, so that could be something we could calculate. Let's go back to this table because we have mass in kilograms. So let's make a new column. Right, let's go mg, which is the weight. This is going to be in newtons. Okay. So uh, take each mass in kilograms. Multiply by, you can do 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared. I'll pick 10 meters per second squared. So you got one Newton weight, two Newton weight, and a five Newton weight. So, go one, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Bam. Right. So for x equilibrium, 0.05 meters. That corresponded to one Newton weight, bam, right there. When x equilibrium was 0 0.1 meters, that was two Newtons, bam. And then for 26 centimeters, that was five Newtons. Right there, bam. Yeah, and look at there. There's your straight line. So let's get the uh, slope of this, which should represent the spring constant. Right, rise over run. So k equals, uh, here, I'll, I'll just pick these two points. How about that? These two points. Right. So the rise between those two points is four newtons, right? Five minus one, it's four newton rise. So four newtons divided by, and went from um, 0.05 to 0 0.26 meters. So whatever 0 0.26 minus 0.05 is, I guess it's 0.21 meters, right? So shouldn't that give me Newtons per meter, right? right? You guys see that? Did this rise over this run? This rise over this run. And that's telling me 19.0 Newton per meter, right? Uh, maybe it was like 20 Newton per meter or something like that. Oh, yeah. So are the axes in the correct direction given that we can use the gravitational force of beams as a variable? Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you're thinking like uh yeah, independent variable, dependent variable, yeah, you're right. You probably would want to uh, flip the axes. Um but if you look at the, the structure of this formula, uh, maybe you want to uh, probably like I have it. So yeah, yeah, you could you could go either way. Right? If if you do it the other way, if you put weight here and ex uh, equilibrium here. Right, which would be like independent dependent, which is traditionally how you do it, then the slope or sorry, the, the reciprocal of the slope would be the spring constant. You could do it that way too. Yeah. Right. Okay. All good. All right. So the other graph I want to do is going to be uh, oscillatory motion, which has something to do with this right here. Okay. Uh, now I do want this to be linearized. And, and that's one of the slides that I just showed you guys too. So uh, go, go ahead and uh, uh, rearrange this so that, here, let's all do the same thing, right? So the, this spring constant would represent the slope. Right? Go ahead and do that. So rearrange this so that the spring constant represents the slope. 
to give you guys a head start. So you want to put it in the form like y equals mx, something like that, or y, y equals kx, kind of do. Y equals kx. Hopefully you squared both sides. So ideally you're past the step now. You guys have a head start. Um, hopefully you took that K and cross multiplied it. I'll swap both sides while I'm at it. And that actually would do it right there, because right? this could be your y value, or your y axis. This could be your x axis. And this could be your slope. Right? It's like in the form y equals kx. Like I said, right? uh, if you wanted to take the two pi quantity squared and divide it down, you could do that too. Right? Um, or, or or attach the k. Right? Right? So I'm gonna do this. Now, if I want to do this, then I'm gonna graph this. Uh, it looks like I need to square my time periods for get my x axis values, and I need to do this crazy manipulation. Or, well, just multiply the math by two pi quantity squared to get my y values. Okay. So that could be another two columns right here, right? So let's go. Um, what's time period squared, and then what's two pi quantity squared times the math? So this will be in seconds squared, and this will be in kilograms. Okay. <laughs> Squared zero point zero. Like that. And then uh, two pi quantity squared times the mass. Two pi quantity squared times the mass in kilograms. Okay. Are we all right? Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Right. Uh, right. So for, from that last step we did, uh, remember the main skill I really want you guys to have is exactly what's on this paper right here. Be able to go from this to this. I mean, look, there's two steps, boom, boom. You guys can do that, right? Okay, so oh, let's put two pi quantity squared times the math on this axis. That'll be in kilograms. Let's put time period squared on this axis, that'll be in square seconds. So whatever number, it's going to have units of second squared. Square seconds goes up to 2.64. So let's go like 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And 2 pi quantity squared mass goes up to, well, almost 20. So. Well, uh, go 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Uh, for, for, okay. Okay. Uh, let's plot these coordinates. So at 0.2 square seconds, which is like fifth of a second, fifth of a square second, you have a d pi one squared mass of just less than four. So bam, really close to right, right there. Uh, this 0. 0.41 square seconds. We're looking at 7.9, so the shade less than eight. It's like, bam, right about there. And for 2.64, 19.7, right. Yeah. Ooh, that one's way out of out of whack. Um, all right, so ideally this should line up in a straight line. It, ha have I made a terrible mistake somewhere? Are you guys get the same numbers I'm getting? Okay. 
All right, let's uh, uh what to do with this? Because that one's way out. I wonder if um, uh -huh. let's, let's see this first. Let's, let's see what's the slope of this just this bit. If we treat this guy as an outlier, right? Um, I, I wonder what the slope of just that bit is. So and it pretty well goes through the origin. Maybe I'll just pick this point and go through the origin. So do you rise over run of this? So what is seven point nine divided by uh, 0.41. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what happened here. Maybe, I, I don't know, because the slope of this line is exactly what we're looking for, right? This is, um, this would give us a K of 19.3 Newton per meter. So that would be, okay. which is in line with the Hooke's law version. Oh, all right. Hold on to this. We're, we'll do. Uh, I still want to make this oscillation graph with you guys. So we'll do that on Monday. We'll do some. Uh, um, I'll, I'll pull an FRT on Monday too. Okay. Right, so you guys have a good weekend. Okay. We just put this in the chart. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Then um.